keeping keeping my head up and that eye contact, you know, with you know, looking at my ugly friends that I'm playing with and this and that and keeping that eye contact on stage and it makes you more comfortable and you, you know, look out into the crowd, engage the fans sometimes, not too too much, you know. <laughs> but also, um, I'm playing I'm playing in a band now where um I've been working with Lauren Hill for about a couple years now. And every rehearsal, you know, I show up, there's like somebody new there. So the last rehearsal I show up and it's like it's a, a programmer there. He's like playing beats and stuff, you know, like on top of what I'm doing and this and that and this and that. And that was like super frustrating. Like y'all can imagine, you know, I'm sitting there playing like uh um, you know, uh I'm And I hear this like super hard trap beat out of nowhere, but like a whole bunch of it's just like super busy, and he's just going every single song. So I was like, right, you know, I'm just chilling. I had to pull him to the side, like, hey, look. So we gonna have to communicate. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, you know, maybe some some songs you don't use a snare, maybe you use like a, a snap or like a different sound, you know. So, but I was watching him. You know, I was watching him the whole time. So, but. Uh, that communication and that, you know, is very important. So if you do have a mirror at the crib, play in front of a mirror, you know, just watch yourself a little bit. And you don't have to work on like your facial expressions and stuff, you know, like most of us look dumb while we're playing drums. That's just how it is, you know, so. <laughs> but as far as, you know, just your posture and how you look, because, you know, you're in an environment where you have to entertain. So, you know, you know ask yourself like, you know, am I en entertaining myself right now? Just a little bit, you know, you don't have to go crazy. You don't have to let your hair out, you know, Go crazy! You don't have to go outside your element. None of that. Just you know, make sure you're 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 comfortable. Make sure you look comfortable. Um, no questions about that. Uh, so what I want to do now is I'm just gonna play for a little bit, and um, I haven't really played like a full kit. Like I usually strip it down and this and that and this and that, but. I'm just gonna play for a little bit, and then I'm gonna continue the the f with the clinic. And again, I don't have tracks, so I'm gonna just I'm gonna just flow. That's cool, y'all. All right.
Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's so random. I mean, I just love to play. Um, I know you guys love to play, too. Uh, anybody going on tour soon? Or anybody got some shows coming up? Who's, who's playing tonight somewhere? That's cool. Nobody? I saw, who's going to the Ghost Note show? What's the Ghost Note show tonight? I'm gonna just continue. Huh? I can't hear you. What? The list is nah. Um no. It's like it probably is for I probably can't go myself. But um okay, uh so I'm gonna try it. Um I wanna show you this thing I've been working on and it's like it's kind of like the CD skip, um, but instead of stopping your snare drum, you just keep your snare going. So that turns it you know, from like a chop sort of into like a groove. So it's the CD skip, but make sure your snare keeps going, two and the four, however you're doing, whatever. So check it out. Once you start breaking your snare up, that's when it, it sounds tricky, but you just, it's not tricky. Watch. So it's like you keep the pattern going, but you just, you in and out your snare drum, and that's what like breaks it up, and that's what makes it sound so, you know, I guess more like tricky and complicated. So, um, um. Or you can switch it up, you know, it doesn't have to be 4-4. Four, four. You can do a whole bunch of different ideas with that. These are just ideas, like however, however you groove, your groove might be a... So many different things you can do, but all you're doing is piggybacking off of the.
all the same thing. It's just a bunch of different ideas. So you're not stressing. You're not stressing yourself. You're not thinking, oh, you know, what chop to pull out or what this and that. Nah, like you, you know, you're. So it's like, you know, it's just less stress. You know, it, it took me a while, like when I was younger and I was um, playing, you know, I used to just be so stressed because you're, you're trying to wow people. You know, you got your friends stuff around, this and that, and like, no, no, no. I mean, all that stuff is cool, but I just wanted to be relaxed. So, you know, these are just certain things that just like relaxes us as musicians. You know, like we get on stage, you know, we get a little antsy, a little excited. And um, like, I remember when I did the, that HBO Lady Gaga special, like, man, I was in the back, breathing, 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 gotta calm down, gotta calm down, gotta chill. Gotta calm down, cause it's like you know that that like that that heavy breathing and all that excitement can like easily take you off the click, or you know might have you like a little rushy, you know. So, but this is like it's so it's just there's nothing stressful about it, and even a lot of times like when I'm shedding, you know, like my homie can do something crazy, super chop, up and down, mm, boom, and I might you know I'll just come back with a groove, and that's just as satisfying as the chop. So once you get to that level, you know, where you're, you, you love grooving that much, you know, and, you're, and your groove is that solid, you know, where you can put it up, you know, in the shed, you know, just have fun before opening up. That's a good, you know, that's a good, that's a good thing to do. Um, any questions or anything? What's up, man? Yeah, pre-show rituals. Well, being that I'm now 36, like, um, I stretch, you know, stretch my hands, you know, um, some leg stretches, um, you know, maybe sometimes a couple shots of Henny, depending, <laughs> depending on the gig, you know, maybe even some of grandpa's lettuce, depending on the gig. It's just, but, um, and I like, like, depending on the gig, like, you know how you do a fun gig and the music is just crazy? I like listening to rehearsal takes. Like, sometimes rehearsal takes be that crazy, you know, it just, it, it, it gets you hyped. So I'll listen to that, too. And, um, but that's, that's mainly it, you know. Um, if it's a gig that I'm un unfamiliar with, I'll listen to the music, you know. So that's about it, though. Um, I, don't, I don't do, like, any, like, certain warm-ups or, like, exercises and stuff like that. Maybe get like a little bit of loose, you know, but nothing major. Any other questions? What's up, man? Okay. Yeah, some of my influences um, in the past and now make me feel super old. <laughs> in the past, yeah, my past influences are still, no, that's a good question because it does change. Cause you know, everything evolves. Uh, okay, so growing up in Philly, I had Brian Fraser Moore. Are y'all familiar with Brian Fraser Moore? Yeah, um, you'll see him Super Bowl halftime. That's my bro, and little John Roberts. Now, Brian, growing up, he was like super power, chops, crazy. Like, he was killing. He was super, he was like the Aaron, the Aaron Spears back then. And um, little John, he was so clean, like, and so finesse, he was just the cleanest drummer I've ever heard in my life and had crazy chops, but everything was like super, super clean. Pretty boy, it was super clean. So I had them, and then I have Amir Questlove at Larry Gold's, whom I had, you know, first access to, well, watching how, how he mics his drums and uh, how he puts his gaff tape on his drums. Just every single thing, just watching him. Then, not too far up 95, I had Gerald Hayward. You know, playing with uh, he was playing with Hescott Walker and James Hall. Cause I was church, so I was church. So meanwhile, my influences they started gigging. You know, they were gigging for like all these artists. So I see them venture out. So I start listening to different music and stuff. And so today, and then uh, Chris Dave, I I meet Chris along the road. Um, major influence, and you know, my brother of course, just like all the rest of them. Um. Then you have like my fellow peers, you know, uh, Aaron Spears, um, you know, Ronald Buner, you know, just everybody who's just killing, and, you know, and you look at everybody for inspiration. You know, a lot of drummers, they can't, they, they have a hard time even going to like somebody else's page 
and watching clips, like without getting in, you know, in their bag. Well, in their bag in Philly, that means like in your feelings. So it was like, you know, like it can't even go to another page and just watch another drummer, you know, like without getting in your feelings and, you know, feel some type of way. And um, that's really not what this is about. You know, like it's a, it's a peaceful state to be secure in what you do, secure in your flaws, and just go from there. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's perfect. We all, there's a journey to everything. And once you get to that level, there's a higher level, and there's a higher level. So it's, it's never ending. So, you know, learn how to appreciate other, uh, you know, other musicians and stuff like that. But, you know, to be honest, it usually happens on, like, with, like, the musicians who, I guess, are the quote-unquote pros and stuff like that, you know? It's like, when you get to that level, you're, you know, you're used to people constantly giving you compliments, you know, and this and that, and it's weird, like, you'll automatically have it out for certain other guys that are doing well, like yourself. It's just a lot of different, different dramas and different things that you just don't want to get involved in, you know? And I say that, just celebrate everybody's plan, you know? You might be inspired, even if they're not as good as you. I watched a seven-year-old's clip, and I was like, dang, man, I like, I like how he's sitting right now. He's sitting real, you know, he's real squared up. I'm like, you know, I like that. You know, I'm going to work on how I'm sitting. You know, it's like anybody can help your plan. So, but yeah, that's, so Chris Dave, t today, you know, um, D'Antoni Parks, he's incredible. Um, I really, really like. CJ and North Carolina. Um, sorry, I don't know y'all names. He plays with John P. Key. Like, incredible. Just look up John P. Key's drummer. Super, super crazy. Super crazy. Um, any other questions? What's up? Shout out to Gordon Campbell. Um, as far as as far as keeping the one, so like when you're playing with a band, um, sometimes your guitar player might be doing like a loop, and that could be your click. So if you do have like a hard time keeping a one, you can rely on what your guitar player is doing, you know, or your keyboard player might be doing, you know, the, the same thing. Like whoever's doing something that's constant, that's who you can rely on when you want to try some off time stuff. So like once you get in like a steady groove, you know you can kind of fly off and come back because that's your, you know, like you can lean back on that. So, um, cause the one, the one never goes anywhere. So, like I said, you can like first like if you you rely on your own one, you know, but for practice and for like rehearsal sake, and you do get in that situation, um, if the guitar player or somebody else is doing anything constant, if they are not moving, you can venture off, because you can, that's your click right there, you know? So if they're playing, you know, ding, 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 ding. I can't really show you, because, you know, I'm by myself, but. Right. One, one. One, 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 one. One, 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 one. One. So it's like whatever's, you know, and then like playing to a loop really, really helps that too. Like if I had like a couple of loops up here, I'll be able to show you, you know, and you can just fish off.
the track is going the whole time. So that's 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 a good way to help. You know, if like somebody in your band is just steady and right there, you know, you can like venture off and try some stuff because like the one is never leaving. And um, once you get used to that, then you know that'll upgrade your confidence. You know, like in your own one, and you won't even second guess yourself. You know, like you'll you'll do something, and then like when it's not on, you'll look at the band like yo, yo watch me. You know, that's. A, Good question, bro. Any other questions? What's up, man? How long? When I was? One more time. Mm. I did not go to school, <laughs> but um, I would practice. A lot of times, I would come home and I would just play to the radio, so. I was I was like practicing in like song form, you know I would you know do some stuff you know some drum rolls here and there, but then I would just turn on the radio and just. My dad had his big speakers right there, you know, and I would turn on Rick James and this and that, and, you know, and um, so that's how I learned. So I kind of learned that that discipline. And then I was so glued on watching Little John and Brian and their their shows, um, I would just play like songs at home. Like I, I didn't really do like a lot of fills and stuff. So I would just play songs. So, and it, that helped me learn song song format. You know, why am I playing a bell right here? Oh, like, oh, right there he's playing a bell. Okay, let me, let me play the bell. So I kind of, I was programmed to play the bell uh, during a bridge and you know, during a hook and stuff like that. Cause I was used to playing songs. So that's what I did mostly. I played songs and I would, you know, turn on some, um, you know, some like seventies funk or something and then in high school, getting older, then you know you had Hove, you know, and different stuff on the radio. And then by that time, I was like gigging and stuff. So now, if I do practice uh, by myself, it's just um, I like to do the same thing. I like to, you know, sit and play t to music. Like I mean, I will work on stuff by myself, but it's just I like you know playing to music, or, or like I'll just go to the studio and just do a loop right there, you know and just jam out that way. Cause that way I'm working on my timing and I'm exploring, you know, I'm working on everything. Instead of just playing by myself, nothing, you know, just drums, which is cool. Like, like we do that all the time, you know. But uh, like a lot of my day is spent in the studio. So I'll take some time, you know, just do a loop and just play like that. Any other questions? You guys look like a couple, like you look like Heath Ledger. <laughs> You look like JJ Reddick. So it's like I'm talking to Heath and J um, Any questions? Any other questions? I wish I had some homies to play though. But you know what? I'm gonna come back with my my uh, squad. I have a trio, and we're gonna play. Um, but one thing I wanna work on is uh, playing with. Um, I've been playing with Lauren Hill for a couple of years now, and she does a lot of Fela. How many of y'all familiar with Fela? Yeah. So. Tony, Tony Allen, Paris, legend. Legend, legend, legend. So Fela. Um, So what I've been doing um, with uh, Miss Hill is she'll tell me to play a, a Fela beat. And then she'll be like, okay, now see if you can add on a trap beat on top of that. You know, a trap beat on top of that. I'm like, oh my God, all right. So it's like, it's been like a lot of that. You know, it's been like some house. Now, uh, you know, uh, add a Latin beat on top of that. Okay, now uh, give me some, uh, all types of stuff. So I've been working on that lately.
So that's like another fun thing you can do, you know, just uh, combining genres, you know, just like working on stuff and this and that. And, um, you know, that's just something fun that she likes to do. Like, it, it, it'd be a house beat. <laughs> and she'll say, okay, now, um, give me like a 6-8 African groove on top of that. I'm like, okay. So it's just like different, you know, stuff that's like making me, you know, push and I have to like sit and like, you know, like listen to it. So, you know, like um, a few grooves to get some ideas and, you know, just work on like combining stuff. It could be like a rock beat and um, a hip hop beat, like a rock beat. Uh so you can ask some. Add a little bit of trap to that. Your hi hat pattern can like make or make or break your beat. Like your hi hat pattern can switch, and that can switch your whole beat. So you. Can <laughs> trap it up. You know, your hi hat high hat patterns are so so important. Like they can uh um you know uh the hi hat pattern is everything. Like if you are playing hip hop or um any kind of beat that has a certain beat to it, you know, you have to stick to that hi hat pattern. That's like first and foremost. So don't definitely don't leave the pattern, you know. It'd be certain certain moments, you know, where you can leave it, but um, that's the first thing. If you do get, you know, if you get a gig or um, you know any any kind of gig, and you're doing some songs, learn the patterns. Like, trust me, that's the first thing you do. You learn the patterns and do the beats. You're a pro. <laughs> that's it. Any other questions? Any questions about anything? Anything about the Eagles? It's like, <laughs> all right, right, go ahead, cool. What? getting a fan base um man it was i don't know see i'm ah well i guess it's the way uh the way everything happened you know just my older brothers doing their things and then i, I started to get calls at the studio and i'm doing my stuff and then i was playing with um a popular gospel choir in Philly called Jehovah's Chosen. So like back then it was it was Jehovah's Chosen and Ty Tribute. So and bands like my band in Jehovah's Chosen was made up of Junius Burvine. I don't know if anybody knows him keys, James Poiser, Keys, um like nothing but like these legendary players. So then I I went from there and we were playing in Baltimore, Washington, you know, traveling like on like the East Coast. And then I started playing with Ty Tribute. And we started traveling East Coast, West Coast, and this and that. So just from those things, the traveling and stuff, and, you know, I got, like, a lot of, you know, um, whatever, from the gospel world and stuff. Then I started touring, doing some stuff with Nissan Stewart. Um, and I don't know, like, that's, you know, God opening doors, you know, uh, me walking in those doors and being a professional, you know, and this and that, and, then I love I love fashion. I'm working on my clothing line. Um, I think 
I should be dropping in about two months. And that's another thing. You know, I, you know, I love going to the barbershop, getting a haircut, looking fly, all that stuff. And um, I guess that adds to it. I don't know, man. But I was always like, uh, um, I was always doing something different. You know, like when I was on the road, I would come home, I'm setting up shows, I'm playing places, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So it was like, you, you know, just stay stay busy. And um, or if there's nothing going on in your city, find out what's going on in the in the nearest city. Go there. You know, you might meet somebody. So I was doing a lot of that. I was going to New York. Then I was in Baltimore, Philly. You know, like when you're young, you got time like that on your hands. <laughs> so it was like now, of course, you know, I don't do that. But I guess those things, you know, are good for networking. Like we just had the NAM show. That's good for networking. Um, and of course, today social media—that's the ultimate. You know, I know. Um, Plenty of drummers who aren't even like on like you know a major tour and this and that, but have like way more followers than me, you know, because it's that social media. That's like that's a whole nother ball game, you know. You got to stay on top of that, you know. You got to do shout outs, you have to do, um, you know, all of that stuff. You have to constantly network with other people, follow, unfollow, retweet. This it's it's a lot. So social media today makes it easier to be more popular, and um. A perfect example of that is my little bro, Trey, because, you know, he watched what we've done, and he's grown up in that, in a social media world, so he ar he already came in the game, he had his merch, he had this, he had that, he had this, he had that, and that's and that's how, like, a lot of the youngers are doing it now. They have all their stuff, whether it's a, a three-song EP or whatever they're working on, you know, like, a lot of the kids are, like, 25 steps ahead, so social media is the best way right now, and then more importantly, just, you know, killing your instrument, you know, just, you know, being a beast on your craft, you know, you post some videos, you know, people like the videos, they might re repost, you know, y'all know how I go. Another question? What's up, man? Yeah. Um, Yeah, um, well, it's kind of weird talking about myself, but I <laughs> say, like, okay, one thing, one thing that I, um, I always, always like to remain raw, you know, like, you have those certain gigs where you, you know, you really have to stick to the two and four, you know, you really got to keep that pocket, you know, if that's what they want, that's, that's what they want, you know, you know, if you're paying for, playing for Bette Midler, you know, you can't do chops all night long and stuff like that. Maybe like a moment or two, I don't know, but um, we're playing with, you know, uh, Tony Bennett, you know, versus anybody else. But um, I always like to be like passionate and remain raw. So, you know, and, like play from the heart, you know, all the time. And, um, and I always give a hundred, you know, like I grew up in Philly, so it was like, you know, I'm an AI fan. That's my number one players, uh, you know, AI always says, you know, leave it all on the floor. So, you know, every show, I try to be as focused as possible, you know, give it my best shot. You know, like sometimes we have like uh, problems like sound, you know, can't really do your best, but um, I do my best and my, my sound, I like to stretch, you know, I like to stretch the limits. Um, and, you know, certain ideas I get, I love math, so I love numbers, so you know, I'll think if something can go mathematically, and then I'll try it and stuff. I don't know. I, like, I love all of that stuff. Now, I can't, you can't go off time at every gig you do. You know, I don't do a lot of off time stuff with, like, Lauren Hill, and I didn't do off time at all with, like, Gaga. So, but then um, I have my own band, you know, and I could do off time stuff with that. Or it depends on the gig or the songs. Um, a lot of off time stuff I did in church. So, uh, but what separates me is just that right there, like my sound. You know, I was blessed to have my own sound, you know, and to work on that. True story. I was in the church, and I had just played with Ty, and I was getting finished, getting ready to leave. Like, all right, let's go. We done. Come on, man. Let's go. Let's go. So I'm, I'm like, walking out. I'm outside talking to my homies. We about to leave. This lady, she's preaching. She's like, somebody, go get that drummer. Go get that drummer. She starts <laughs> I walk up the middle aisle. She was preaching to me for like 20 minutes. 
But one of the things she said was, she was like, you know, God is going to bless you with a unique sound, you know, and, you know, all of this stuff and this and that. And, and then that, that was like maybe like 10 plus years ago. So to stand here today and to have it and govern it, you know, and to have my own sound and, to, you know, and to be able to work on that and piggyback off that, you know, it's, it's a major, major blessing. So that's what definitely separates me is my sound. Um, and I'm I'm very raw, you know, like, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a eventually get one in, like, <laughs> you know, like, not that it's about that, but, you know, like, we love to play, like, you know, like, you know, what's coming, you know, what's going to come, you know, I, I just like that, you know, like, you know, just like, just like watching Aaron, you know what I'm saying, you watching Aaron Spears, and it's like, you just watching, like, oh, it's, it's going to come, it's about to happen, he about to let this bridge have it, all right, hold on, hold on, it's like, you know that, you know he's going to, wow you, you know, like, just that wow factor, you know, and, um, and I love to play, I love to uh, make my teammates better, you know, my band members better, and stuff like that, so I think that's what separates me, sound, most importantly, you know, that's the main thing. Question? Yeah, um, okay, like, I did, I came in after Chris Dave on a Maxwell gig, right? So, as far as that gig and the limits being pushed, he had already pushed them. So, it was easy for me to come in, you know, and I could try this and that. That situation was cool. Gaga, I would push, but I would push in, like, more, like, on a, on a chop side. Now, with uh, Lauren Hill, she, she lets me go here and there, but I don't, like, fully, fully go because the band members, like, <laughs> my guitar player, he'll be the first to get lost. He'll be the first. You know how you see him play, you know, like, and you see that, that foot tap, and that, that foot tap get crazy, you know, you're like, oh. And, like, once that foot tap is off, that's, listen, so I try not to throw them off because I am the heartbeat and keeping it together, but um, then I play for Le Nubian, you know, who, where it's, like, all of that stuff they get and they understand, you know, like, you know, they understand those rhythms and so every artist is different. And then it's Diddy, where it's like, go, go, yeah, like <laughs> where it's just everything is going. But I didn't go like super, super, super duper. Like whatever I did, I kept the two and four. So you go off time, but just keep the two. That way they can still like understand. What is she doing? Are you stretching? You drop something? You planking? Oh, okay. <laughs> you questions? Mm -hmm. A valuable skill? Um, yeah. With the Gaga situation, for, I, I auditioned. And like the last day of the auditions came in, and she's like, I want to hear you play something. So she had on glasses, and I played for like five minutes, and then she stopped, and then she took her glasses off, and she was like, oh my God, you know, you're my drummer. So then she explained, she was like, you know, I had my eyes closed the whole time. She said, that, you know, and I, I could just feel everything you were saying, and this and that, and this and that. So it goes back to what I was saying, just being raised to be a passionate, raw drummer, you know, and not uh, handcuffed, because you could be handcuffed and still be in a pocket, but still be free and have presence. So, and in that moment, it really, really helped me, you know, because the moment is so big. I'm like, okay, Spanky, you're third. You're sitting there waiting for hours and hours. You're like, oh, man, what's going to happen, man? What's going to happen? All right. You know, it was a, you know, a, it was stressful for everybody. So that was the only thing I could lean on to not stress out. You know, all right, listen, let me just chill. I play drums. This is what I do. I play drums. I know how to play. So let me just chill, just play. And that's just what it boiled, boiled down to. And so just that level of comfort um, and confidence in what you do. You know, that level of comfort, um, confidence brings comfort. So, because um, I remember growing up in church, um, I was playing in church for the first time, and I did good up until they started shouting. They started going crazy in church. You know, the Holy Ghost fell. So it was like you know, people started screaming, doing like she's doing, getting up, running out and stuff. And so, <laughs> and... 
I got lost. I couldn't play the shop music. So, and my mom was like, listen, don't, don't forget. At the end of the day, you actually know how to play drums. So just play. So I was like, all right. And that really like stuck with me. I was about like seven or eight. So in that moment, you know, that's what I did. It really, really helped me, that comfort. Any other questions? My man. That's Trey. Can't hear you. Mm -hmm. Um, like, uh, you know, like if you come home and it's like a jam session, you know, and you feel like going, you know, like go to the jam, sit in. You know, it's an opportunity for people to hear you. You know, somebody might be a, a tour manager there you know, just grabbing a drink after rehearsal, you know, like you never know. Um, or just uh, studio sessions or stuff like if, you're, if your homie's working on stuff and you're like, yo, is it cool to come through for a little bit? Stuff like that, you know, like pushing yourself. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of friends, um, I mean, some cats don't feel comfortable enough to do that, you know, because everybody's on the same grind. So, and that's also a good sign of humility too, you know, when you just – all right, listen, I'm not playing, but I'm going to come learn from you. Like, you playing, you know, I'm going to check you out, bro, and support you. You know, a perfect example of that is uh, my uh, youngin Sticks and um, Black Dynamite, you know. They always supporting each other. Two crazy drummers, crazy monsters, you know, can shout. I mean, she can shed for hours, um, but they support each other. So, yeah, just, like, keeping yourself busy, going to different events, networking, knowing who the promoters are, knowing who the hosts are, because the host – they the ones that get on, you know, they go find out who on drums. Like, who is this? Who is on drums? Who is this? You know, so holler at them. At the five spot um, in Philly, um, the host, her name was River. So she would get on. If you was bad, man, she would embarrass you. You know, you was bad. So it was like <laughs> me and her, hey, Riv, what's up? You know, like she's like an OG in Philly. You know, she loves everybody. So, you know, it always feels good, you know, when the host knows who you are. It's just all of that stuff adds up to just you, you know, and the next thing you know, your name is brought up for a tour, sessions, all of that stuff, because you're always around, and you the homie. You know. Any other questions? All right. So, I'm going to show you all some more exercises. Um. I like to, I like to work on a lot of different grooves, and I like to get different sounds out of my snare drum. Um, this snare is like, it's tuned kind of loose, but I can still get some sounds out of it. So, I just want to show y'all different, um, different snare sounds that you can get out of your snare. So first, of course, you have the rim shot. You have the uh, double shot. You have <laughs> the triple mash. I'm just making these names up, but um, Uh, you can you can drag it down to your snare and drag it off your snare at the end. You can even uh, you can even add an extra hit to it at the end of your buzz. Uh, You can add a snare hit to it. And then, of course, like I said before, you can just piggyback and stack that. So 
I'm gonna stack my kick on top of my snare hit at the at the end. Or you can do all, all snare hits. You know, then you can CD skip, like I showed you before. That CD skip is actually still on beat because it's like. You know, so like sometimes like when you skip, it actually like meets up to the one. So you don't have to like jump back to the one. It'll just automatically meet up to it. And that's when you can come out of it, you know? Y'all understand what I'm saying? So. One, two, one, two, one. One, two, one, two. Or you can slow it down. So you do the fast one, you do the slow one, then you can do the CD skip on top of that, you know. Just Keep going on and on. So and like and like within that, those are all grooves, you know. I'm not like chopping, you know. So it's then you can break it up into different grooves. So it's just the same thing. So it's like you're just piggybacking off of your hi-hat pattern. But it sounds like, you know, you're, you're super, super venturing. But you're really not. Any questions? So um, another little trinket. I like to show trinkets. I like to show different ideas for you guys to go home and try, you know, in your own way. Um, I do this thing on a hi-hat. I like to get one one hit down and then three
So, and I've, I've learned to do it like kind of fast. And um, one foot down, mash your stick and get a triplet out, one hand. to the end. Stack that with the kick. You can break it up, you know. Just like different ideas you could do. Um, any other questions? What's up? Yeah, um, I would recommend uh, the groove first, but the I mean, nah, like it's like a mixture of both. See, I was playing, I was playing it in the choir, Jehovah's Chosen. No lie. We were at a show, and I remember doing it, this long roll. I landed it on a one. Good. Ah, yeah. My MD was like, don't do nothing else. I was like, hey, OK. So <laughs> yeah, he yelled at me in front of everybody. It was so funny. So you know, it, it showed me discipline. I remember we had rehearsal one time, and I showed up, and they put on Slum Village. It was like, OK, play this from top to bottom. And for like two hours, I'm playing this genre. I'm playing, you know, I'm playing that. So that really showed me discipline. And after discipline, there's placement. So after like learning those two things, discipline and placement, I was straight, you know, it's a certain, you gotta know when to place it. So I definitely was like hooked, hooked on the grooves, but it was like after that, because I was definitely chops, you know, chops all day. And um, not until I got with like, I was with, with Ty and with Soundcheck, you know. We like spent so many hours grooving and just rehearsing and stuff. So I was just. For like two hours, like we'll just be like grooving just to come up with ideas. So that really helped. So grooves. I'm not saying grooves over chop. It's, it's just, you know, all different areas. You know, we all, we all learn chops as youngins, you know, and then we eventually go into, you know, grooving and really, really playing some phenomenal music. Just like uh, like LeBron James, he was a beast in high school. He was a monster. We all knew he was gonna be crazy, but now today he's like one of the goats, you know, because he's gotten so much better. He, you know, took those skills and whatever, y'all know. 
questions? Let's go. How many of y'all can dance? Like, I mean, any of y'all drummers can like, do you, do you consider yourself a dancer? Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, dancing can really help your plan too. Um, it can help your plan as far as like how you move and, and your comfort. Not that you gotta be all going crazy, but it's like sometimes if you're on a crib and you throw on something, you know, and you dance a little bit, you know, like sometimes you just gotta get it in. But I'm telling you, that actually helps. It helps your plan. If you're moving, if you're moving, you know, like you know what you wanna move to. So when you're on drums, you know how to make people move because you're used to moving, you know, and you're used to jamming out and dancing. Um, so you might wanna just like, Again, like get a mirror and just play and just, you know, jam out, watch yourself, you know, like keep that eye contact, head up, and um make sure you look you look comfortable and move every once in a while. You don't have to be like super stiff, you know, you don't gotta be like going crazy, but you know, just however, a head bop or something, or a shoulder twitch or something, just you know, make yourself at home. You know what I'm saying? Get comfortable. Like hip hop, I'm not gonna be playing for whole. Nah, like for whole. My name is Ho. You know, like. However you like connect with the music, you know, just let that out on kit. That's another thing people love. Like, you know, um, one of my favorite drummers, her name is Meg White, White Stripes. She's so crazy, like, she don't think about nothing, it's just she might be super sloppy, she might, you know, but it's like so much character, and she like, like Meg White is so killing, so killing me. Any other, um, no questions? All right. So I want y'all to try, um, it's this, I've been trying to like stack certain, certain grooves I was telling you before. So I was, I've been trying to stack this. That whole stack thing is like, you know, you have to break your mind up to like different parts and like get down one groove. And once you feel comfortable with that one, add something else. And then once you feel comfortable with that, add something else and add something else. It's like that game, uh, it's like a game you play when you go from person to person and they start, um, a is for so and so, and then it's B is for so and so, and like you might be in, but you have to repeat all of theirs. Like, okay, A is for this, B is for that. It's the same thing, just st stacking. That's like my word of the year. Just Just like stacking that, that's just my thing. Like my thing right now, just stacking, 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 stacking.
So it's just, you know, stacking and, and being like um, that repetition, you know, that that was like the constant. You can go on and on and on and on and on for, oh, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, just, you can go on and on and on for hours like that, just, you know, just like piggybacking off of that, you know, it's just little stuff. And then like, when you're shedding, um, and they're like, bam, 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 drummer going off, drummer going off, ah, ah. It's like, it's real simple, but it's like, yo, like it's, it's real, like, it's definite, because it's like, um, I will understand that, like, I will understand what you're doing, because, like, it's like, it's repetitive, and it's, you know, it's clever, and it's singing. It's on some Steve Gadd type tip, you know, some, you know, some groovy type stuff. Um, also, another, you know, another one, another trinket is, um, of course, the, the world famous snare buzz. Um, I love buzzing. You can buzz anywhere. <laughs> you can buzz as your main snare. snare buzz it's so subtle you know uh your ghost notes um Even the, you know, you could take it a step further and like give it like a, a snare mush or like a, uh, a time mush. This is kind of weird. You know, you just mash this. So it's like, you're like suffocating the sound. This, this sounds really good when the toms are, um, when the bottom heads are off the toms, because it has that like vintage threes company sound. So just bust out with that. People may think you're a little retarded, but if you do it one more time or two times, then they'll be like, oh, oh like you meant to do that. So it's like. I 
I actually tried to do it um, in one of the uh, like one of Ty's recordings, and like <laughs> I went back to listen to it, it did not come off right. It's, it, it sounded like super super weird, but like in the studio, like you know you can get that off the little mash. So the buzz is different. It's more. This one is just the mash. Combo. Uh, so that's that. I hope, hopefully, you guys remember this stuff and just try it because it's like they're just fun little exercises. They're like uh, conjunctions, uh, <laughs> little bridges, I call them, you know, just to try um, bigger things. Um, one more, one more last thing. Uh, even like for those of us, um, you know, who have like a lot of chops and stuff, one refreshing thing to do is just to place that chop somewhere else. So if you're, uh, so if you're doing a chop, So if you would place that chop somewhere else, it might sound totally, totally different. It's like you're doing the same chop, you know, but just like place it, place it somewhere else. Take these two hands and just put them on different places on your drum set. And um, it'll create, you know, like just a whole nother lane, you know, because th once, you, once you add the hi-hats, anything, the sound of it just gets me hype all the time. Just that hi-hat. Another thing. Um, okay. Uh, another other idea that I have been working on is um, switching from halftime uh, four four to halftime, or however you want to switch it up. You know, halftime. Um, I like to switch from. I like to combine. You know, the six eight into the four four. Um, everything is a multiple too, so everything goes. So. So um, it's like an exercise I've been working on. You just switch it from your 4-4 four, four groove. Same thing.
So that right there, I just played the same 6-8 groove. I just added some break beats in it, you know, and just like breaking it up a little bit. And um, it makes it a little tricky too. different there's so many different things you can do um but I, i've been on i obviously love my kick snare hi-hat this is my world like i'll have kick snare hi-hat is in my basement you know it's just <laughs> i can sit and shed and practice on kick snare hi-hat all day and just different grooves and um i've been working with like a lot of different samples lately but the next time i come back i'm going to bring my full situation i don't even want to i don't want to play to like tracks and stuff like that but um but i'm going to I'm near the end. I'm concluding the end. I think I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna jam out a little more, a little longer, and, and like play for y'all. And um, before I end, is there any more questions? Any questions, my man? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Placement. Um, as far as knowing, knowing where, knowing where to do it, knowing when to do it. Placement. Um, it depends on what's going on around you. Uh, your keyboard player might be doing, playing something very, very important. During that part, you can't do it there. The bass player is doing a fill or something right there. You can't do it there. Just listening and being aware and knowing what's the right spot to get in and get out without affecting everything so much. So, and then once you find that placement, we can go overboard. You know, sometimes we take it a little couple of bars over. That's for fun. You know, we do it. You know, it's cool. Um, but you know, we gotta be mindful of that. You know, that's just um, uh, some of the things we get away with as drummers. But placement, it could be something with the vocals. Um, the vocals might be, she might be about to start her first verse and you're doing like the, at the end of your fill on that. That's important, you know, like you gotta be out by that time. So it's just all types of stuff. Um, but placement is definitely important. And um, like I said, like once you, you know, just playing, playing with your squad, and playing with bands, you know, for like a long time, you feel it, you know, like you feel when's the right place because you know you have certain spots that you're used to your bass player doing stuff in, you know. So you got to pick and choose your spots. It's just like a basketball, basketball player. I like to relate sports and music. Um, Carmelo, one of his uh, one of his favorite NBA shots is like the corner three. That's like his thing, you know, like once he get in the corner, it's like lights out. So that's it's the same thing with just placement, you know. It could be, it might be a spot coming out the bridge where you love to get out. Like, you know, I love going into the last hook. I love doing big fills going into the last hook. Stuff like that, you know, certain certain placements. Any other questions? What's up? Yeah, for um, I mean, uh, for that gig, I upgraded drumsticks. I went up to like 5A, and 5A, and I had some fusions with Vader. So that was the first thing that helped because it gave me more power. My sticks were a little too light, <laughs> so I had that for power. And um, uh, for the most part, I stayed like within like the four four chop realm. So like whatever I did, I didn't go like outside of that, you know, like to make her go too too crazy off. But um, I definitely stretched. I stretched. I just, I set my own, you know, I set my own limits. Like, they never said, yo, you can't do this. Or she never said, you know, but I thought that was the right thing to do. So um, I picked I picked and choose my battles. Never within the songs, though. Never. Sometimes if she would just let me go by myself, you know, I would just do some stuff. Yeah. So that changed dynamics, everything. Um, well, for that situation, it given a stadium and like an arena, a lot of the ghost notes and stuff like that, and like the 
yeah, like simple stuff. It doesn't even like translate, but um, it would be like certain moments and certain songs where I would, you know, have those times to work work dynamics. <laughs> like we had some like interludes like that and stuff like that. But yeah, for the most part, it was definitely like heavy hitting pocket, you know. Heavy chop, stuff like that, you know, for sure. And uh, cause the bigger the arena, the less um, it's probably gonna pick up, like all your ghost notes and stuff. Then again, it depends on your sound, man. You know, our sound man was amazing. My drums were super loud. I think if I sneeze, you could probably hear it. But it was, I was. That's the loudest I've ever been. You know, and usually it's the other way around on like the pop gigs. It's like, oh man, you know, I can barely hear your drums. You know, I was super loud. Okay, uh, tightness, being tight, it starts here. It starts with how you're sitting. It starts with your positioning, you know, with your snare drum. You have to make sure you, you can get a nice consistent hit out of it. Um, you should have a dark hole in the middle of your snare drum from hitting it in that same spot, and that's with being comfortable. So, hi-hat. It's all about control. You know, you have to have control. Um, Everything, you know, like from the position of the kick drum, everything has to be right. And um, and then you just sit and you groove, you know, and it starts with it, comfort and then you just groove, you know. And comfort, I think, like I said before, comfort brings about, confidence brings about comfort, comfort brings about presence, you know, because once you're comfortable, You know, it's like I'm not really thinking. I'm comfortable, you know, and I'm secure, and I'm I'm straight. So it's just making sure everything is position is positioned right, and making sure you sound as solid as possible. And not 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 so much loud, but just solid, you know. And also, you can definitely listen to man any uh, so many different James Brown records and like. Um, Gap band and stuff like that, because the, the drummers never left. They were right. So just that that right there, that just that that'll get you locked in right there. Definitely, I'm so weird. I'm so weird with that stuff. I think everything helps your playing, like. <laughs> Um, what else? Like Simon, like that game stuff. So like any uh, matchmaking games, stuff like that helps. And like even like, like Bejeweled, Candy Crush, stuff like that. All that stuff helps. You know, it's it's it's, it's like it's like it's like therapy. I'm telling you, and, and like helps the way you think and stuff. And um, but also uh, um, dancing. I, it's, I know it sounds so corny. Nobody dances anywhere. Nowadays, but dancing help helps a lot, and um, I don't know. It's like I'm always thinking different things, uh, different mix and match number games. Um, all of that stuff helps, in my opinion. Like if I, if you would go see a therapist and he would give you therapy to do to get your drumming together, it would be stuff like that. Okay, take this mix and match game. Take this game. It's called Twenty Four. Take it home. Play with it. That's a game I grew up playing, 24. You have four numbers on the card, and you have to take those four numbers and get 24. Man, I was in a 24 competition in school. <laughs> I was in a 24 competition in school and lost to my cousin in the final. So, but, but you take four, uh, it's four numbers, and you have to get 24. So that stuff like that, it helps your thinking because it helps you uh, combine equations together while you're playing, you know, just. help you work on that because you're so used to computing, you know what I'm saying? So 24, I would get that game, 24. It's on it's on your Apple Apple iPhones. 
um, yeah, breathing. Well, definitely working out. You know, cause like uh, you g- you gotta stay conditioned, gotta work out. Um, I like to run run basketball. You know, like if I'm out of shape, a couple fulls, that'll get me back. Cause like once you st- start out, like just those a uh, couple Gaga shows. I remember our second tour. I came in. I wasn't as in shape as I was. Man, them first two three shows, I was worn out. Like by like the fourth fifth song, it killed me. So gotta stay conditioned too. Work out and all that stuff. That's all y'all do here in LA. Is like everybody goes to the gym, and eat avocados. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? What's up, bro? Um, listen to the listen to the music. Like I just did. Uh, I was blessed to do uh, Jimmy Fallon with uh, French Montana last week. And all I had was a kick drum and two DTX pads. Cause the track, it was so chill. It was like it was it was like pretty, pretty empty. And I just wanted to implement some more, you know, electronic sounds on top of that. So you listen to the music and determine after that. And then um sometimes the artist can tell you, like, yeah, you know, uh, I like pocket or I like this and that. And sometimes the MD could be like, listen, I hear this a lot. Hey, listen, so we just got a couple of hits on the bridge. Other than that, you could do you. Like <laughs> that's what I hear all the time. So it's like, and I like to just, I like to get the sounds in the song first, put them in my pad. That way I can play the electronic pattern and then open up acoustically too at certain spots. Any questions? That's it. Are we at the end? Yeah, yeah. man. I just want to thank you. Thank you guys. Please give a big hand for Spanky. Thank you guys. And again. We already spoke about it. I'm coming back. I'm bringing my band. Yeah, it's the last question I have. When are you going to be back? Uh, (laughs) Anytime. After we win the Super Bowl. There we go. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you guys again.